Hello everyone, Pedro here with Cinemild. Excited to be here today with something very new and very different. The Noto Film Systems Inertia Wheels. In this beautiful box is the first unit that we have gotten. We are now uh, one of the few dealers that have these all over the world. They are in stock and shipping. They are a little different than your regular wheels. Um, a lot of you might be familiar with the Alpha Wheels of which we make uh, these beautiful stainless steel heavy wheels for. Uh, you might be familiar with the DJI Master Wheels. Uh, Freefly also makes their own wheels now. Walter Clausen, Veracity, there's a lot of them out there. But mainly they are the same in a lot of ways. These are different in one massive particular way. So they're called the inertia wheels, as you can see here. And so we're gonna get into why they're called that and how that makes it different and what difference does it make to you as the operator. All right, my favorite part, actually opening boxes, especially when they have cool stuff in them. All right, so the first thing that's apparent is that it actually comes in this pre-cut, uh, laser cut, high density foam uh, packaging, which is actually perfectly sized intentionally to fit inside of a SK8, I think is the brand. 211-8 uh, is the model of the case that it's designed to fit in. So here you go. So let's pop this off. Oh, check that out. All right. So um, here you go. This is what it comes with. The first thing that's immediately apparent that, you know, we should probably bring up is there's a striking resemblance to the Alpha Wheels. And part of the reason for that is it's actually the same engineer. So 1A Tools is the, is the company behind the Alpha Wheels. Uh, the main uh, engineer uh, behind the Alpha Wheels actually split off from 1A Tools to start Noto Film Systems. This, in a way, has a lot of the same DNA of the Alpha Wheels, but it is actually a new sort of separate company um, that has, you know, close ties to Alpha Wheels, but it's not an actually one A Tools product. Noto Film Systems, it's a brand new company. With that said, um, let's go through what's in the case here. All right, so here we go. We got this nice high density, high quality foam, nicely laser cut, very tight fitting actually. Uh, we got the main unit, we got the comm cables, the power supply. Here we got the main AKS area. And of course then, lastly, we have the receiver. So let me, let me pull this guy out. There we go. And so receiver um, has a communication status light. Uh, we got the main antenna. And then here we got the um, comm to the gimbal. And then we got a USB for upgrading or changing certain things down the road. So that's the receiver. You mount this on the gimbal somewhere. Um, and then the communications cables that go into the receiver are these two guys right here. So these guys, you have two kinds. You have the S-Bus, which is this sort of radio controlled connector here. This is the S-Bus part. This part goes into the transmitter. This guy is the one you're gonna use to control a Ronin 2 and a Tilta and all the older Ronins also. Um, so um, I think Ronin S also uses the S-Bus so this is a very popular and common size. And the other one you get here with this little white tip is the one for the Movi Pro and the Movi XL. I believe the older Movis, M10, M15, use the S-Bus as well. But Movi Pro and Movi XL use this cable right here. These cables are very small and kind of fragile. Um, we do sell optional extras. I do recommend you buying you know, at least one of each just to have as a backup in case somebody uh, yanks it or you know the receiver sometimes falls off the motor might rip out the cable so that's a good thing to buy as a spare so over here we got the 20 foot extension cable hard wire so if you don't want to run uh, wirelessly because you're getting interference or something a lot of times you know if you just go hard wire then you know you remove any sort of variable and um, you get perfect performance in very, you know, uh, polluted, radio polluted uh, situations. So this is the power cable for the power supply. It is a 30 volt power supply, so it's very powerful. And um, 
And the, the, the main reason for that is that the inertia motors, they really like to be well fed, <laughs> electricity speaking. Um, the more power you feed them, the more uh, control, the more accuracy you're going to have with um, your settings. Uh, of course, you can power this via a limo or via a, a battery such as like an Anton Bauer or a V-mount, for example. Um, speaking of, it actually comes with a limo to detap. So, of course, you can have a uh, battery plate, you know, with V-lock or, or a Anton Power a gold mount. Um, and so you can power it just off of a regular camera battery using the DTAP power right here. Um, next, we got um, the antenna for the transmitter or for the receiver. And then for the transmitter, we have uh, 2.4 megahertz and I think a 900 megahertz antenna. Anyways, they're both here. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's what it comes with. All right, so here we have it. Man, what a really nice fit and finish. I really like it. They did a really good job. Uh, the knobs have a nice feel to them. Uh, I like the shape of the knob. Feels really good in your hands. Let's start from the bottom. And we got these nice rubber pads. If you happen to be working on a, a hard table, maybe you're practicing at home, um, these keep the wheels from sliding around. More importantly though, we got a row of 3816 and a quarter 20 mounting holes. And of course, this means you can take our Mitchell threaded collar and castle nut and mount that on here. So this will go straight onto, at that point, it would go straight onto a Mitchell uh, base legs or hi-hat. And so that's really nice. These are the main um, mounting legs for the unit itself. The next thing I wanna show you guys is the back and let's go over a few really key important parts about this back section so the first and major point are the two antennas so now normally sometimes these are two antennas and they're the same in this case they're not um, we have actually two transmitters inside of here so this is a very important distinction because in a lot of other wheels, there's only one transmitter. And what happens is when this unit is communicating with the gimbal, as I understand it, um, if it needs to get data back from the, trans uh, the receiver, uh, it has to stop sending in order to receive. And so this introduces lag. And so the idea behind using two separate transmitters is we have here uh, if you note really carefully, here we have uh, it denoted as 2.4 gigahertz. And you see here on the actual antenna that it comes with, it says 2.4. So you're going to want to make sure you have the right antenna on the right port. And so let's actually thread that in right now. And so just be pay very close attention to which antenna is which. And you want to get that fully seated. And then this antenna, you'll see here it says sub gigahertz. And you'll see a different number on the antenna. And so there you go. And so the most important thing about this is like I was explaining, since this has two transmitters, it can transmit and receive at the same exact time. And so the most important thing about that is Normally with one transmitter, you have to stop sending in order to receive. So the idea behind this is that these, this decreases the latency even further. So in theory, these have an even faster response and faster latency than any other wheel on the market. And that is because of the two different transmitters. And so that is a really important point, and it's also really important that you make sure that you put the right antenna on the right port. We have here the third axis limo port. And so this important point now to bring up the fact that, as you can see, there's only two wheels. And so in the future, there's gonna be uh, some sort of handheld unit that will probably be able to be maybe hard mounted on here um, or separated in the hand of somebody else to control your third axis. And so why do you need third axis control? Uh, you will be able to control the roll axis from one of these knobs, but you know, a lot of times you're operating pan and tilt. And if you're on a crane and you're looking straight down, 
then your role becomes pan and you usually you'll have somebody else then take over at that point or a lot of times you if you're actually doing the 360 role that the uh, now the the Ronin 2 also does it but the Movi Pro also does it um, you you're going to have maybe maybe somebody else controlling the role as you're panning and tilting or you're panning and tilting and then you stop and then somebody else then goes into the roll because I'm not sure you can do both at the same time with uh, with either of those two gimbals. So in any case, it is going to be a separate unit and it, that's where it's going to plug into. Um, that is the main USB port for updating the firmware and generally communicating with the unit itself. This is the hardware uh, connector. So the hard wire goes from here and it goes that 20 foot wire that we saw earlier and then it plugs into the transmitter and then the transmitter has that comm cable that goes into the gimbal. So that's how the hard wire works. Uh, right now the motor USB uh, port doesn't have a function as well as the aux port. So this is kind of future proofing. Um, who knows what he has in mind that at some point those might, might come into play at the moment there is no use for them. And of course here we have the power connector and you see here 10 to 35 volts. And so that is the main power input for the unit. And so that's pretty much an overview of all the connectors on the back. So, all right. So at this point, um, really quick overview here of the front fascia of the top side of the unit here. We got a, a power and a function button a uh, menu button, and then a number of buttons that will do different things depending on what menu you're on. There are also, these are also the buttons that you can program and assign to different functions. And these will be the, the two, they press in and they rotate. Um, these will be the main ones that you're gonna be changing uh, settings up and down for drag and different speed and different things on each of the different axes. Um, so that's pretty much a physical overview of everything. I think the we're now arrived at the point where, you know, after all, it is called the inertia wheel. We have here the inertia motors. What the hell is this all about? Let's get into that. What makes this wheels different than any other wheel on the market? It's this concept that they had about controlling the inertia of the wheel. So if we look here at the alpha wheels and just about every other wheel on the market besides the inertia wheels, is like the alpha wheel in the sense of you got a physical mechanical wheel that has a certain weight to it that's attached via shaft to an encoder of some sort that translates that into data and then it, that gets beamed out and it turns into motion at the gimbal. The primary way that you control how the wheels feel in your hands as an operator is two ways by controlling or, or affecting the amount of mass that is in the physical wheel itself and perhaps by adding drag to the wheel. So, and by drag we mean, imagine there's like a brake pad and it's pushing against the wheel. So that's resistance, right? That's a physical resistance, just like a brake pad touching a wheel. The alpha wheels don't have a drag adjustment. Neither does any other wheel out there except the DJI master wheels. So they have a little knob on them that adjusts the amount of drag on the wheel. So that is different than inertia. So it's very important to understand these two things. You can, you can think of drag as how much brakes are you applying, right? So when you apply the brakes on your car, you can hit the brakes full on and lock your wheels, or you can slowly release the brakes and that's going to apply a lessening degree of pressure on the wheel. And so if you take a wheel and you spin it and there's no brakes on it, it's going to spin for a long time. The more mass you have, like a flywheel in an engine, it's going to spin for a longer amount of time because the way inertia works, you know, it wants to, it, it has more mass and it wants to keep doing what it was doing. The more inertia you have, the longer it goes for. The brakes will, will essentially slow this and depending on what how much inertia you have down we'll apply the brakes just like stopping the wheel on a car on the alpha wheels they originally come with a aluminum wheel physical wheel and when i started using it i felt like oh this feels a little bit too much like a toy that there's there was no weight behind it there was no inertia to it and so one of the improvements 
that I sought to make besides the physical shape of the wheel when I made the optional upgraded stainless steel wheels um, was I want to change the shape of the knob and I want to change the shape of the wheel. But more importantly, I wanted to add mass. By adding mass, we increase the inertia the wheel has. So as you see here, when we spin the wheel, it keeps going for a longer amount of time. And when you actually operate it to displace that amount of mass takes a little bit more effort to change the direction, takes a little bit more effort. Um, you can start a shot, you can spin it, and you can slow it down. So these are all things that you can, uh, that change the way the wheels feel. And if it change the way the, the wheel feels in your hand, it affects the way you do the shot. This is very much something that can change between one operator and the next. Um, there are actual gear heads that even though you have a large camera on there, have a very lightweight feel to the wheel. There are some other gear heads that you feel a little bit more mass. And some people have become accustomed to one thing or another. Some people feel like uh, with different lenses, different focal length lenses, or perhaps the kind of shot they're doing, right? Where there's a fast panning shot or a slow panning shot or a fast panning shot that then slows down, you might feel the need to have a wheel with more mass. Or you might even, if you're doing a spinning, uh, situation you might feel the need to add a little bit of drag which is why the DJI Master Wheels have the drag control and there's some other larger remote heads on the market that have dra drag control also so the only way to change the way this style of wheel feels is by physically changing the wheel right you go from a lightweight aluminum wheel to a heavier much heavier in this case I think this is a five pound wheel um, much heavier weight wheel but then once you're there, you're stuck with it, unless I then take this wheel off and put the lighter weight wheel. And even then, I only, it's either on or off, right? I have either a lightweight wheel or a very heavyweight wheel. So what they thought up was, what if there was a way that you can both dial in the drag and the inertia of the feel of the wheel? That would be pretty amazing, right? And so how the hell you would, would you ever do that? So essentially what we have here in these inertia motors, it's something close to a drone motor on a big drone. You can see here it's an actual very big motor, but it's an electrical motor. By writing very smart software and controlling the electricity delivered to that electronic motor, it changes the amount of resistance that you feel in the wheel. So one of the ways you can think of this, an electric motor, is windings and magnets. And if you think of a maglev train, like the bullet train, uh, when you go to slow it down, they apply electricity uh, to the magnetic poles and that slows down, that reverses it, and it, it, tend, it acts as a brake, right? And so by carefully controlling that electricity, you can actually change the way the wheels feel in your hand. So that is the magic that the inertia wheels do and they provide is you have full control over the way the wheels feel uh, as far as mass and also as far as drag. So that is pretty interesting. I mean, up until now, you just haven't been able to do that ever, uh, aside from, like I said, physically changing the wheels on something, um, or if you had a head that had a, a drag adjustment to it. So this allows you to very much fine tune the drag and the inertia that you feel in your hands when you're operating. That is pretty interesting. And I have to uh, admit that when he brought this idea to me some time ago, I was very skeptical. I thought there's no way he's going to uh, be able to translate the way something feels by controlling an electric motor. And um I'm the first one to, to be surprised to say that he did exactly that and he absolutely pulled it off. If I close my eyes and I'm turning the wheel and I have someone adjust the inertia or the drag, it actually, I could be closed my eye and be operating on this wheel. It actually feels completely different, which is pretty amazing. Now there's some things to keep in mind. Um, the more inertia you add to the wheels, that means you're using more power 
so you're, you're you're utilizing more power so they like to be well fed always have topped off batteries if you're using batteries or if you can be ac powered but of course if you're if you if you're using uh, low inertia then it's less of an issue but so at this point um, let's start hooking this up and let's turn this on because that is the most cool thing about these wheels is the display and the knobs and all the adjustments and all of that all right so let's get into it the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take the receiver put the antenna on it i know a lot of this stuff seems very obvious but you know um i'm thorough right so uh we got the ronin 2 here and we're going to get the ronin 2 com cable and then you're going to want to get the ronin 2 s bus adapter cable that came with your ronin 2 it's in the little uh, cloth pouch in there and that's where the s bus connector actually goes into so it only goes in one way right there and then there you go you take the end and you plug that into the receiver and then you plug that into the ronin so there we go and i put a little piece of velcro on there and boom all right so now we got the ronin on going uh, I'm gonna fire the Ronin up and uh, now we have to power the wheel so uh, of course you can use the power supply and like I said a couple times already that is the preferred method um, the other way is by using the DTAP limo cable and we just happen to have here one of our other new products it is the TB50 battery adapter so this actually takes uh, your Rodin 2 TB50 batteries and you slide that guy in there and uh, it makes it so that you can actually slap this on anything that takes an anti bower or V-lock so very cool new product uh, this is the basic model uh, it does actually have a uh, two D taps and so we're gonna actually connect those right here and boom there you go plug that into power and now we can power your your wheels from, of course, a regular gold mount or V-lock on a battery plate, or in our case, we're using the TB50 to power our system. So really cool option right there. Um, and let's, uh, well, let's get it all fired up here. All right, we're gonna plug in our power source and then let's fire it up. And the first thing we see, the first time you ever turn this on, you're going to see it'll only work after you activate it. So as you can see here, you see your serial number, a public key, and then we got a URL, or in this case, we also have a QR code. So that's the easiest thing. Um, just take your phone and uh, right here on the most iPhones, you have a QR code scanner and you're going to want to line that up it's going to find it and it's going to take you straight to the page where we're going to put in our name our company name our information the serial number is already auto filled in there and you're going to type in your public key which in this case is already auto filled you see there 248 and so i'm going to fill in that information and then you're going to hit submit and it's going to activate all right and i'm going to hit submit and as you can see here it says inertia wheels registration your i immediately got an email you saw there pop up notification your inertia wheels have be registered check your email for code to activate wheels so you can see here you have a one-year warranty that starts on the day that you activate it and so let's go ahead and go to that email as you can see here this is the email i got immediately upon hitting submit uh, it has step-by-step -step instructions on what you need to do but basically as you can see there complete activation on the inertia wheels press the menu button so we're going to do that and then we're going to go to activate and then we're going to enter the registration keys so as you see there it's 101 once you enter your registration keys, all you're going to need to do is hit activate. 
and it's going to reboot the system and then when it turns back on you're going to see the wheels actually move by themselves that's its calibration that it does when it turns on there you go you see the wheels moving by themselves and they're just calibrating themselves so let that let them do that and there you have it so now our wheels are officially turned on for the first time and so we're going to see here uh, we have a voltage readout we're currently on ac power so that's why you're seeing 31.5 volts nice and strong so you're gonna have three little icons here so you're gonna have an up arrow that shows you what frequency you're on we're at 915 megahertz so that's the uplink that's why you have the up arrow and then you have the down arrow which you see is not solid right now and there's no readout and that's because our receiver is turned off because our ronin is turned off so we just turned on the ronin and you're going to see this change momentarily there we go and so you see here uh first of all you see the solid downlink number there and you see there it says ps that's packets per second uh so that means it's getting uh, 100 you know it's getting data back right um but back to the center icon which is probably the most important um now you can see what looks like cell phone bars and so that is your wireless signal strength and anything below a negative 50 uh, is fairly strong. This is what we would say is a good signal. Um, anything below negative 100 will start your, which would probably mean your signal is getting a little bit weak. Um, you can have like a negative 90 and, a, and still have a strong signal. So I would pay more attention to the bars more than anything else. Uh, of course, this number is very uh, informative and important. Uh, but anyways, it gives you some information, which is great to have. A lot of wheels don't, don't give you that information. Um, so as you can see here, we got all the usable assignable buttons. This is what they call the dashboard. Um, you can see here the LEDs light up according to where you have the, as you rotate it, you see the numbers change. And so that's cool because you can quickly glance and get a visual reference as to where the numbers are at. And that refers to a you know, speed ratio. And so anyways, before we get into, into that, let's go into our menu. All right, so really cool. You see here now it lets you know which button is actually active, which buttons are active. So this is, if you press in is your enter button, this is your back button, and this takes you back to the the main page so uh, in this case uh, let's click in here and as you can see here it's set to the Movi XL or the Movi Pro and so we want to go ahead and change that right away because we're on a, a Ronin 2 so uh, it's really easy to switch gimbals you just select from the list of what gimbal you're using that's the tilt of gravity in the future there might be more gimbals here as well um, but we're on the Ronin 2, so we want to select that. So right there, uh, hit here to go back. So that's the output menu. Um, we're not going to go really in-depth with any of these menus at right now. I'm just going to give you a quick overview. Because once again, this is not a full-on tutorial. This is just, I want to show you uh, all the different things you can do with it. Because at this point, you're probably watching this because you're evaluating whether or not you want to buy this. So I just want to give you a quick tour of all the things this wheels can do and not necessarily go really in depth so if we go into the wheel menu um, neutral so neutral is literally like hitting the neutral gear on a gearhead that essentially turns off the wheels um, and so you can actually uh, assign one of these to roll um, you can reverse your pan or your tilt here you can affect the ratio of which the wheels move um, and so this affects like your speed, right? So, um, this is where you can change that. Um, there's the fastest and the slowest ratio, uh, your upper limits. So, uh, one of the cool things you can do is you can set limits for tilt and pan, and this lets you limit, um, you, you can adjust the softening of what happens when you reach that limit. So the interesting thing about these wheels, because you have the motor controlling how they feel when you hit a limit the wheel will actually stop and so the limit softening is how that wheel stops when you hit the limit it'll resist you trying to go past it
which is really cool because then you don't lose your positioning with the wheels as far as your mental positioning with the wheels. And so anyways, so here's when you can uh, set your tilt up and down limits, your pan uh, limits, and then your limit softening. So anyways, that's the wheel menu, uh, motor menu. Um, you have mass and drag. So these two are really the heart of the inertia wheel system. Right now the drag is at zero and the mass is at one. You can turn that up. Um, let's leave it three right now and zero drag. Um, but yeah, you can go in there and set your drag, right? And so um, there's that and you can reboot and clear any errors if you have any problems with the motor. So that's our motor menu. Um, effects. So this is something that's really cool. In the future, this is probably something that they're going to work on and expand more. I think right now the only effect that's loaded on here is like a handheld look where it's going to sort of move the frame around as you operate. So the nice thing is you could do this manually by sort of like shaking the wheels, but you can just operate normally and it will shake the frame for you. So a, maybe a possible future use for this is um, like a, an actual shaker effect, like an image shaker. Some of you are not familiar with that. There's an actual device that can go on the front of the lens that makes the image shake, kind of like uh, if you're watching Star Trek and they get hit by a missile, everyone, you know, the image shakes. You can, you can shake the camera, you can simulate like an earthquake. Uh, very useful actually for uh, vehicle shots to action movies and stuff. So this is something where in the future, if they add that shaker effect, that'd be really cool. And of course, you know, the sky's the limit there as far as the effects that you can build into these wheels. So that's, that's something to look out for in the future. It might be very interesting. Um, here's our wireless menu. You can select what region you're using this in, right? So different regions of the world have uh, used different frequencies. Um, and so, you know, um, I believe this, this range is one that you actually have to pay to get a license to use. So in general, the lower the, the frequency number, the more range your signal has um, because the way it travels through the atmosphere. Um, and so, but the lower ranges are limited, they're commercial ranges. Um, but you can go in there and you can change it, right? So that's really, really pretty cool. Um, um, and then you can enable or disable your wireless. This shows you as the, the front page did, the little icon originally said we were on 915. This shows you that too. You can do an RSSI scan of all the wireless in your area. So as you can see here, everything is getting very low use right now. It looks like something's on 921 or 920, uh, which is not uncommon. Um, and it actually picked the one that's been in least use. So this might give you very good information on the RF um, noise or pollution, as you might want to call it, in your area. So this is kind of a really cool thing that no other wheel does. It gives you a lot of information. Um, one of the things you've got to watch out for is after you do a scan, it turns off the wireless. So uh, you're going to want to go back in there and turn it back on. If you're wondering why your, your wheels aren't working, um, that's probably why you did a scan and you forgot to enable it again. So that's the wireless menu. Um, the, before we go into dashboard, I'm going to skip down into system. Um, so this is one of the things that when I first tried these out uh, a while back, a beta version, it's the first thing I asked them about. It's like, wow, these lights are really cool, but um, they're bright. <laughs> uh, there are many reasons on set you may want to turn down the brightness of these lights. Um, you know, if you're at night on a really dark set, first of all, it could be re re distracting. If you're close to set, it can reflect back on set. Um, and worst of all, if it's really bright, it can affect your night vision. So being able to turn these all the way down is really, really pretty cool. Um, for I like these actually. I'm going to turn, I'm going to leave them turned up because they look really cool on camera. So 90 seems good. So there's your voltage. You can set up a different voltage warning if you want. Gives you information, your serial number, uh, different information 
on your wheels. Um, the firmware gives you information on what firmware you're on. You'll note that you have different firmware for the core, the receiver, uh, the motors have a, their own firmware, and then the wireless. Uh, and so uh, we'll go into updating firmware and some of these details on the detailed uh, in-depth tutorial video that we'll do in the future. Um, regulatory is just FCC stuff that they, they must, the government makes them display. So you'll never have a need to go in there. Uh, reset. So this is where you would do a factory reset of the system. Now, if I went in there now and I press this, this is something very important for you to know. Um, it's going to reset the system, but it actually resets it back to when you took it out of the box, in which case you're going to have to do your authorization again, in which case you're going to want to write down or save on your phone or maybe even write on the bottom that uh, enabling code because then you don't have to find the email and all that stuff. Um, so just keep that in mind when you reset, you're going to need to authorize it again. Um, and so anyways, that gives you a quick overview of the system menu. And I left this last because this is actually the most interesting one and one that um, you're going to be going into a lot because the coolest thing about the dashboard and these rotary knobs is actually you can assign up to three functions to each knob. So every time you press in on the knob, you activate a different function. So you actually won't have to go into the menu all the time if you need quick access to different menus. So let me give you an example. So left knob. So on the left knob, let's do um, pan, where is it? Um, tilt, drag, okay, so let's go back. Let me do right knob. I wanna do tilt mass. And then you see here after I activated knob uh, right, now there's a knob right too. So now let's go into the second one and let's make that um, tilt, tilt drag, right? So I got tilt mass and tilt drag on knob one and two. So now if I go back out and as you can see here now you got two rings, right? Um, well, three rings really. Um, so here, this is what we looked at before. This is the way it looked like before. There's only one function speed assigned to this knob. With this knob, we now have three functions represented by these three rings. And you can see their mass, speed, and drag. So every time I click the wheel, it activates a different function. So you can quickly go from mass to drag to speed and make that adjustment. And so we can go into the, if we go back into the menu, into the dashboard, um, and now you see our mass left or knob left. We only we have nothing set, and we have two functions on the right. So we can go in there now on the left, and as you can see here, there's lots of things you can select from. You can do focus iris zoom. Uh, you could do mass. Um, you can do drag like we did before, um, and then you can also um, do adjust the limit softening. Any of the things in the menu that you can uh, adjust, you can select in their gear ratio, right? Um, roll weight. So this is for the roll, if you're gonna be doing a roll and you wanna assign it to there. Um, but anyways, you can assign anything you want to there. So there you go. And now if we go back out now, um, you can see there's two functions now on the left knob. We got speed and drag on the left. So that's how you would control, the, you, can, yeah, you can change the different things that these knobs are assigned to. We got left and right. And so you can set a lot of quick, quick access presets, which is really nice. So if we go back into knob, so you see here, these are one, two, three, and four. Um, they are all um, blank right now. See, there's nothing in those little things and the little boxes. So we can actually assign anything we want. So if we go into dashboard, and you see here button one, two, three, four. Um, so you can go in there and do a bunch of different things, right? So uh, I want to hit, I want a neutral button. So now when I go back out, see how it says neutral right there? So that means all I have to do now is press that button 
and it now puts the wheels in neutral, which means they don't do anything, right? They're in neutral. So you can assign anything you want to, see that makes it activate, you see how it lit up, and then that turns it off. So it's really great. They give you a lot of visual indicators of what's going on. Um, so if we go back into the dashboard, um, there's uh, all sorts of cool things you can assign to all these buttons. Um, you, got, you can set your tilt limits. So that means you could be mid shot tilting up or tilting down. And now that you've done the rest of the shot, now here comes a time where they're gonna do the stand up. And if you've had a rehearsal and you can set your tilt up, then you can then just enable the tilt limit and then nail that tilt up with you know making it impossible for you to uh, not, not nail it. So there's a lot of possible uses and it's a couple really cool things about these assigning certain things to these quick buttons right here to the dashboard. Um, the other thing you can do is you can do motor presets. So um, the really cool thing is if you can do a motor preset, um, you can set up different presets on as far as drag and mass. Um, you can do like one with that has a lot of uh, mass, which is to say inertia, right? The more mass, the more inertia um, and very little drag. Or you can have one with little mass and a, and a good amount of drag and you can assign them to different buttons. And so maybe you, you change the lens, um, a different kind of shot. And so you can quickly go to a different preset. So you can, you can assign these buttons in many different ways, which is really cool that they let you do that, right? So this is what's really interesting about the dashboard, this whole concept of having this dashboard is that you can have the buttons do different things. You can have these buttons do different things and uh, do presets and things like that. So um, there's, we're gonna go into a lot more detail on all of these menus and exactly how to use them and why you would want to use them and what they actually do in a detailed sense um, and how you can use it to your advantage uh, in another video in our detailed tutorial video I'm going to do. But I just want to give you again a quick overview of the menu system and all the different things you can do inside of here and you can do with the buttons. Quick things I didn't really talk about was the range. The wireless range is really good, you know, at least a mile, maybe up to two miles. Um, the fact that it can transmit on three different frequency bands is a huge thing. Um, again, there's that commercial band I talked about. Um, as you can see here, uh, right now I have it with a lot of mass and you can't feel this. This is the trickiest thing about these wheels is that it's 100% about feel. If you're in Los Angeles, uh, I can arrange a demo. Um, we will try to be at a lot of the industry trade shows so you can uh, feel for yourself as well. But you really have to feel it to believe it kind of thing um, because I can talk about this till I'm blue in the face. But once uh, you're here and you can close your eyes and I'll change a setting, um, that's when you're really going to feel it. I mean, Right now I have the mass really high and I can tell you, you can see right here, see how it just keeps spinning? It's very much like those stainless steel wheels on the alpha wheel. Um, I can turn down the mass. I'm gonna turn it down right now. And you see there, it spins a lot less because it doesn't have a lot of mass. It turns real easy, really quickly because there's no, when something has a lot of mass, has a lot of inertia, it takes a lot to displace it, right? So it really changes the way that feels. Right now I have no drag. So if I turn up my mass again, and it, it'll keep going, but no drag. So you can see it'll keep going, right? So if I turn up my, my drag right now, let's see, let's go to 10 right there. It hits the brakes. It comes to a nice smooth stop as if somebody was pushing on the wheels with a brake pad. So these things really quickly, I can adjust them. And there you go. See, it's, it's going and it's going just like something that has a lot of mass. So it's really amazing. 
Um, it really works the way the designer intended it to. I'm really happy with the execution of his idea and um, it really works. It really does. What's the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to really sink my teeth into this. Um, I'm going to do a few shoots with it. I'm going to get in a vehicle with it. Um, I'm going to put it through as many different situations that I can in a short period of time. I want to get to know these wheels and I look forward to doing a much more in-depth, detailed look on all of the, the menus, the different things, the frequency scanner. We're going to try to get it into a situation where we're going to show the different frequencies and how you may want to change it or whatever. Um, most importantly, one of the biggest features of this is the dashboard and these buttons and how you can assign them to different things. And I want to get into, I want to show you guys, I want to do a couple of presets, presets and show you how great this can be, how you can switch presets on the fly and really use this to, to your advantage. Because the biggest difference between these wheels and like the uh, alpha wheels, for example, the alpha wheels have a couple speed knobs on the alpha link and that's it. That's all you got. You don't have any of these preset wheels. Um, you don't even have this much control on something as advanced as the DJI master wheels. So I really want to figure out a couple of really cool setups and a couple of situations where these really come into play uh, in a key way um, because that can really make or break uh, my decision to maybe want to buy these and I imagine for you as well. So we're going to do that and um, we'll come back to you with a much more detailed maybe a few months in uh, a review slash um, tutorial video. But for now, I hope I gave you a good amount of information, a good overview of everything on how this works and all the different things it has so that you can make your purchase decision. You know, it does do something different. It's an evolution of the traditional wheels, of even the traditional control wheels, remote head control wheels. It's a very interesting evolution, uh, quite frankly. So the last thing I would say is there is, of course, as with a lot of the things uh, I bring up, there is an awesome Inertia Wheels users uh, Facebook group. So there's a lot of information from other owners that are being shared on there. Maybe a couple quirks that they're running into, solutions, um, user experiences. If you have further questions from this that are holding you back from making a purchase, that is a great place for you to ask questions because there are gonna be people on there that have already bought it, that are using it, that can answer your questions. So I highly recommend you join that Facebook group. Of course, we also have our Cinemild uh, Facebook group. Um, that is always a good place to go, uh, not only to get in on any sort of sales or special coupons that we might be doing on things like this, um, but of course to ask uh, technical questions about these products here themselves. So, all right, guys, I'm going to continue playing and uh, I'll see you on set.